Okay. So we have um, we we've, we've been looking at the parametrically driven oscillator, and again the working conditions um, are uh, the, the oscillator has a no, non no linearity. Um, it's driven parametrically in the sense that this looks like we are modulating the frequency of um, of the um, of the pendulum. Uh, in, if, if it is a pendulum, this would correspond to the case of modulating gravity. And we have um, the conditions for our uh, for getting a quantitative results um, uh, bring bring certain degree of approximations. We have weak uh, damping as a as a, as a basic assumption where uh, weak damping is determined by or expressed in this fashion that the uh, lambda is much less than omega naught. The nonlinearity is weak also and that is quantitatively expressed this way. The uh, <coughs> magnitude of alpha times a squared which is a is the uh, excursion of say the pendulum is less than omega naught squared and we have weak drive. The, uh, the uh, excitation amplitude is weak. As, as, uh, uh, as we get into the demo today, you'll see that none of those assumptions are actually uh, met, but qualitatively, what every result that we are going to be getting uh, is qualitatively well represented by, by the pendulum. There is, uh, <coughs> the, the, the damping is not weak because, look, it takes only a handful of oscillations for the system to decay where you're going to see as I drive it uh, that um, <coughs> say um, in the small amplitude regime you'll, you can actually see the, the excursion of the cone is comparable to the length of the pendulum so it's the amplitude, uh, the drive amplitude is not weak either and the nonlinearities you're going to see, um, like right now, uh, that amplitude is not necessarily small, okay? So all, all the assumptions that we have there are good to, the, to, to get answers, quantitative answers, but the demo is not going to quite represent them. But qualitatively, everything that we get on the board is going to be in the demo. Uh, <clears throat> so we derived yesterday, uh, or in a couple of days, the, the conditions to excite the pendulum from rest. And um, we have uh, the, um, to say if the pendulum is at rest, what is the, the minimum drive amplitude that is if an, a fluctuation appears, say, is going to bring this uh, into, into a, a steady motion and, uh, or into a, 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 what is, what is going to make the amplitude grow from, from rest? What happened here? Okay. What is going to bring it to that state? And so we, de we determined that the condition to drive it from rest uh, do you say to fluctuations? What the parameters that would make the amplitude grow from an equilibrium point, which is rest, uh, is, is determined by this condition. The drive amplitude, which is weak, which is a small number, a small quantity, has to be greater than epsilon over omega naught squared, where epsilon is the difference between the frequency of the drive, half of the frequency of the drive, and the, and the natural frequency of the, uh, of the os oscillator. And that difference is itself small. So this is a small parameter, it has to be bigger than, than a small parameter. And, and then also notice that lambda over omega is represented here, which is also small. So consistent, in terms of consistency, this expression is consistent with our assumptions. Um, they are, all these quantities are small quantities, but so the inequality can be satisfied uh, among those small quantities. The, the excitation from rest corresponds then to, in this, um, in this expression, the excitation from rest corresponds to uh, all the region, the, the region above the hyperbola, this hyperbola, uh, for any drive 
amplitude that is above the hyperbola and any range of frequencies within that region there is going to be growth the amplitude is going to grow from rest to some finite value okay right so we we derived that yesterday for a given drive amplitude there there is a whole range of frequencies for which the system um, can be excited from rest and the range of frequencies for a given amplitude is uh, is bounded by these two values epsilon plus and epsilon minus so given a given a, a, a amplitude eta we can determine the values or the range of values epsilon for which we are uh, within the growth region and that is simply the intersection of eta with the curve that gives us the two values and they are uh, uh, I have them written here notice of course that omega naught squared times eta squared has to be bigger than lambda squared for that to be to have a solution so what we are going to do today is include the nonlinearity <coughs> okay we are going to uh, bring the nonlinear term. Uh, we obtained this result by um, because we were dealing with excitation from rest. We we were uh, neglecting the nonlinear term. Now we're going to bring it back. And uh, if you recall, when we were doing when we didn't have the <coughs> the um, the nonlinearity, the equation that we got for the modulation for the modulation amplitude that modulates this oscillatory term was uh, uh, under the assumption that uh, d chi dt be much less than omega times chi. Under that assumption we obtain the equation uh, 2i omega d chi dt plus 2i lambda chi uh, plus <coughs> uh, omega naught square minus omega square times chi uh, plus 2 eta omega square chi bar chi over bar okay so that is that is the right hand side that is the right hand side just shoving in this solution of x that contains this dependence chi e to the i omega t plus its complex conjugate plus higher harmonics and doing the harmonic balance on the left hand side we obtain that expression now we can continue doing the same harmonic balance on the right hand side so pick only the terms that goes e to the i omega t okay so so this is going to be equal to what it's going to be equal to, to to whatever is going to result from uh, from taking the cube of x so let's let's figure this one out okay so by by doing by cubing x we're going to have um, you know the cube of this uh, e to the uh, chi e to the i omega t plus its complex conjugate plus higher harmonics. Okay, we are cubing that. So we just do term by term. Okay, this is going to be equal to chi cube e to the 3i omega t. That is the cube of the first term. We're going to have uh, three times. <coughs> chi square uh, times chi complex uh, conjugate then is the square of this times is, this is going to bring e to the 2 i omega t times um, e to the minus i omega t that gives us a term e to the i omega t okay then we're going to have a term similar which goes like 3 chi chi <coughs> complex conjugate square e to the minus i omega t this comes because we're taking um, this the square of this is uh, goes as e to the minus 2 i omega t times e to the i omega t brings out e to the minus i omega t uh, etc <coughs> terms that that do not go do not pick up an e to the i omega t, t term or terms that are very small okay because in the higher harmonics 
are going to contribute ever so small. So to lead in order, the leading, to lead in order, the term that contributes um, the, um, to, um, to the e to the i omega t balance, harmonic balance, is only this one. Okay. So essentially, we are done uh, by just recognizing that term. And this guy, notice this guy can be written as three chi chi uh, <coughs> absolutely yeah chi chi complex conjugate times chi right and this is the the square the square the modular square of chi so this 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 indeed becomes um, three alpha chi um, square times chi okay. And the modulus squared times chi. So this is the nonlinear equation that we we can solve, and we can do it the same way <coughs> as uh, we can uh, uh, decompose this in in, a, in its polar form and represent chi as a real amplitude times e to the i um, a phase that is also real and shove it into into here. Notice that the nonlinear term is very easy to deal with because is the modulus square of chi is a square, simply, <laughs> right? The modulus square of chi is just a square. And chi is a e to the i phi. So we do the, essentially the same. We take on the same program that we, uh, we did with, for the linear case, for the excitation from rest. The nonlinear term poses no difficulty whatsoever. The only real com uh, complication comes from here, but we have dealt with that yesterday. So the, with the same, with the same um, uh, approach as we have done, <coughs> and also because it's on your homework, uh, we get we get the following two equations one for the phase and one for the amplitude uh, which are the result of um, putting this shoving this into this expression and and picking the real and the imaginary part and so we have for the real part we have the equation 2 omega d phi dt equals omega not square minus omega square minus 3 alpha a square. This is a new term that came from the nonlinearity plus <coughs> the drive term 2 eta omega square cosine 2 phi. And then we have a, an equation for the amplitude, the ADT <coughs> is minus lambda plus eta omega a times sine to phi. So what, what, what we did yesterday was um, <coughs> for the linear case for the excitation from rest we didn't have this term. That term was not there. And so what, did, what we did yesterday was to look for solutions to these two equations where the phase is constant Okay, without that term, and the amplitude grows. So, for which the phase, or this, this is an amplitude here, for which the phase is constant, but for which this term that, that, uh, that, um, that is on the right hand side is a positive term. The coefficient of the amplitude is positive. So, we have growing solutions with constant phase. Now, we have a different problem here. We have a problem where uh, in the phase equation there is an amplitude amplitude squared. The amplitude equation looks identical to, the, to yesterday's problem, but now the difference here is because of this guy, we can still ask for solutions for which the phase is constant and the amplitude is constant. Okay? Such solutions exist. And uh, so that means we are, we are looking for solutions for which this guy is zero and for which that guy is zero. Uh, we unravel this problem by <coughs> by replacing by finding a solution for sine of two phi. Notice that the amplitude drops out of this guy, 
finding a solution for sine of two phi, putting it in here, and that gives us a relationship between amplitude of the, of the oscillator, the amplitude of the drive, and the frequency offset between them, and the nonlinearity. So uh, uh, let me, um, let me uh, d just plug that in. Um, and that is in your notes um, <coughs> in, in, in equation 137. Again, the mechanics to get to 137 is set this equal to zero, find a solution for sine of two phi in terms of lambda and eta, the amplitude over here drops, put that solution here into the cosine term, and then you get an expression for the amplitude, and also you can get an expression for the phase. I'm just going to go ahead and, and given that this is, uh, this is how chi is expressed, find the steady state solution. The steady state solution. So, uh, the steady state solution is uh, one where the amplitude square is equal to 2 omega naught divided by 3 alpha times minus epsilon plus minus the square root of n eta square omega naught square minus lambda square. So that is the solution for the amplitude and the solution for the phase is such that the tangent of 2 phi is equal to plus or minus lambda over the square root of eta square omega naught square minus lambda square. Okay, <clears throat> now lots of things to, to extract from this information. Is this okay so far? Is this okay? Uh, it's uh, algebra. <laughs> Be, be, beyond, beyond those two equations, this is just pure algebra. Oh, yes, but it's not, it's not only algebra. I think that it's my problem that I understand a lot of things here, but so many information in those equations that I, I don't write everything down and then I forgot. Okay, so what do you, where do you want me to, to go back to? No, no, no. It's, it's just, uh, you know. Uh, So it, it is, clear, is it clear that uh, this, this, one, this one was fine, right? Getting yes. to this one is fine. Mm -hmm. Using this polar form is fine, yes. putting that and getting the equation for the amplitude of the phase. Mm -hmm. Then steady state, we, we want to see steady state. Can, can steady state be sustained? So that means finding the solutions for which d phi dt is equal zero. to zero and d, da dt is equal to zero. Yes. And those two, then, then, it, then it just turns into algebra. Okay. And it turns into algebra where we have made the approximation again that omega uh, is not very different from omega naught, differs by, by epsilon, and so we can, whenever say we have uh, something dividing by omega, we just replace it by omega naught. And, but when we have the difference omega minus omega naught, we replace it by epsilon. Okay, so and that's how this this expression comes comes to be, uh, w uh, where from the f from the amplitude equation we find the solution for sine of two phi. It's very simple. Sine of two phi is simply the ratio of uh, of uh, lambda of lambda to eta omega naught, yeah. right? And then substitute that into the equation for the phase. Yeah and find what is cosine of two phi that way. And then we, we can get an expression for the amplitude. So this gives us the steady state solution. And um, notice, that, um, notice that the following. If, if I multiply by alpha, let me, let me actually multiply by alpha because I, I've, uh, I want to take the nonlinearity to zero, okay? I want to take the nonlinearity to zero. If I take the nonlinearity to zero, okay, then that means that the, the expression in the brackets is zero. Mm -hmm. That expression in the brackets being zero corresponds to points along the curve. So everywhere when the nonlinearity is zero, 
the only steady state solutions that I can get are the ones for which that exist along the uh, along this curve for which the drive and the frequency difference frequency difference between drive and and um, and uh, natural frequency match okay all along this curve I can get steady state solutions also in the linear case the steady state solution is dA dt is equal to zero but in the linear case they can only be met here in the nonlinear case when now when alpha is not zero even when I am in the in what is what was the growth region I can get a steady state solution because as I mentioned to you yesterday that is equivalent when the amplitude grows the nonlinearity set in and that that is equivalent to the shifting of this curve so, so if I'm at a point right here that would be growing in the linear case nonlinearity is kicking and shift the, the, the curve so that this point eventually meets the curve or, or depending on whether it's uh, alpha is positive or negative, the shift can be to this, this direction or to that direction. So nonlinearities are acting as a way to always get us on the curve in this parametric space. This is the space of eta and epsilon. It's a parameter space of the drive. Uh, it's not the response space, but the parameter space. But, so, in the, in the parameter space, nonlinearities move the system to the curve or move the curve so that the, that point lies on the curve. So steady state is always, can always be met by nonlinearities. You get a, a different point that will give you a different amplitude of response and that will give you a different location on the curve. Okay? So, this, this, uh, this guy guarantees steady state, but not for all values of the amplitude. Uh, <clears throat> let me take the case when, when the amplitude, or rather when alpha is positive. When alpha is positive, then um, uh, in the absence of drive and dissipation, when I don't have a parametric drive, so when eta is equal to zero, and when lambda is equal to zero, I'm then reduced to the problem of a free nonlinear oscillator. When alpha, uh, when um, when alpha is negative, uh, rather positive, and eta and lambda are zero, then I get a I get an expression between the amplitude of the response and the frequency difference between the natural frequency, natural linear frequency and the actual frequency of oscillation of the, of the say the pendulum which is, which is represented by this curve so notice that this is the same result we have already obtained in the past for a free nonlinear oscillator the frequency difference epsilon is which is omega minus omega naught is equal to uh, uh, 3 minus 3 alpha a squared over 2 omega naught squared. That is a result that, is a result that we have gotten in the past. Um, so this is a, a, the identica, an identical result. We'll recover the freak oscillations case when eta and lambda is equal to zero. But when eta and lambda are not equal to zero, the relationship between amplitude and frequency difference uh, follows this particular curve. Okay, so let's 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 trace it. Yes. So how does the from the steady state equation over there? How then over there we have an a, a, a omega omega naught squared? Did I get an omega naught? Where did that come from? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I get I, I mis my mistake, this should be omega. My mistake, that should be omega. Okay. That should be omega. Okay, so let's let's look at this curve. Let's look at this curve and let's go to the demo. Uh, <clears throat> so if I start from say from out here, okay, and I drive and I drive with this frequency, I, I fix I pick at an amplitude of the drive. Pick an amplitude of the drive, okay? 
and then I start out here, then my response is not gonna is gonna be zero. That's Bruce. My response is gonna be zero, right? There is no there is no response amplitude. Okay? Then I hit this value right here. At that moment, the amplitude of the system starts to grow and then nonlinearities take over. As I, as I decrease the frequency of the drive slowly, then the amplitude of the response goes along this curve. Okay? And I keep decreasing, continues increasing. There is going to be a point where the amplitude, uh, reach, uh, when, when the frequency reaches a value where, uh, such that the, if, I keep, if I reach that point, the, there is a sudden drop. Okay? And then if I continue decreasing the frequency, I go nowhere. The response continues to be zero. Then if I increase it, okay, back over here, there is going to be a point right here where the system picks up again. But it doesn't go anymore, it doesn't go along that, that, part, that aspect of the curve. Actually, this part of the curve is never realized. It's a metastable uh, state. So rather than picking this one, the system jumps to this place. So right here, I have a hysteresis loop again. Okay, let me show you the hysteresis loop. It's like a little more visible in this case than it was in the driven case because, um, because of the nature of my, my system. It has a little more damping and hel it helps a lot. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start at a frequency that a fluctuation is going to bring it say, to some point over there. Okay, and then I'm going to be decreasing. As I, de as I decrease the frequency, I'm going to climb up. And then there's going to be a frequency beyond which it just uh, jumps down. Okay? So, let's see. Okay, so I started right there, 2.67 hertz. Okay, 2.67 hertz. Now I'm gonna go down uh, in frequency, and I want you to look at the amplitude. 2.66, uh, excuse me, 3.67, 3.65, 6.4, 6 6.2. I don't know if you can see an increase in amplitude. 6, 1, 5, uh, 5, 9, 5, 7, 5, 5, 5, 3, 3, 5, 1, 3, 49, 47, 45, and clearly the amplitude has gone up. So I'm climbing up here. 5, 3, I mean, excuse me, 4, 3, 4, 1, so it's, that's 3.41 3 hertz, 3, 9, 3 3.39 3.7 3.5 3.3 3.1 Two nine, three point two nine, three point two seven, two six, two five, two four, two 
to three, to two, to one. Two all. Three point nineteen. Point eighteen. Seventeen. I'm I'm getting there. That's why I'm going very slowly now. I'm there. So you jump. You jump by three point eight between three point eighteen and three point seventeen. Okay? Just point down. Okay? It's pretty clear, right? The jump was clear. Now I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna now move this direction. And in these steps, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be kicking a little bit the pendulum just to explore that steady state and see if, if, it, if it can jump up, okay? So I'm helping it because as you, know, as you notice, the damping is big. So I'm gonna increase now uh, a little, a little farther. Say, I'm, I, rather than steps of uh, of uh, point point uh, zero one hertz, I'm gonna be point zero five hertz. So, uh, right now three point one seven. Let me go to three point uh, three point two. Okay, let's give it a kick. That guy dies down. Okay, clearly. Uh, at three point two, that was way out here. Okay. Uh, so let me go to 3.25. Okay, again, nothing there. 3.3. That's out. 3.35. Three so that's out. Three point four. Okay, that died out. Four four five. Let me give it a little more. Five four. And I got it right there, right? I think. Yes. So, so I reduce it every time I give it a kick. It didn't quite make it. it I had to actually bring it to this region, to inside this region. And so right inside this region, I gave it a kick and, and moved to the, to the place where it belongs, you know, on that curve. OK? Now let me change the, the demo. Let me change the demo. In this demo, I have this, the pendulum going, going, um, uh, increasing its amplitude as I decrease the, the frequency. That was for a fixed drive amplitude. By the way, this region here, this region here between epsilon plus and epsilon minus is the same region here between epsilon plus and epsilon minus. It is for a given drive amplitude that defines the region epsilon plus to, to epsilon minus or epsilon minus to epsilon plus. So I was coming from here. Uh, I was not inside the growth region coming out here. Once I hit this spot, I reach the growth region. The pendulum can now be, be uh, excited uh, from rest and then reach a steady state. Okay, so what I have in the param parameter space I also have in the base of this nonlinear tuning curve. Now, what I'm going to do is increase my, my drive amplitude. If I increase my drive amplitude, I increase the range of uh, drive frequencies. Okay, but look what happens. I, I increase my drive amplitude. I increase the, the, the range of drive frequencies. That means eventually the amplitude is going to be big enough that it's going to be hitting the sides of the speaker. Right? So it becomes a different oscillator at that moment. 
uh, uh, be before it hits the size of the speaker, it's just um, a pendulum that whose frequency decreases decreases with in, uh, with uh, excuse me whose amplitude increases with decreasing frequency. Okay, the amplitude increases as, as I decrease the frequency. When the pendulum hits the uh, the cone or the walls of the cone, then it uh, then it becomes it's an oscillator that is hitting a kind of like a rigid wall. So the the frequency of oscillation now is gonna in, uh, or rather the amplitude is gonna increase with increasing frequency because now the system be becomes hard. It's, so uh, it uh, uh, becomes almost like a, a free particle hitting two walls. Okay, so what determines the, freq the frequency of oscillation? The, the speed, the speed of the particle. Okay, I increase the speed of the particle, then the particle bangs back and forth faster as I increase the velocity of the particle. Yes? So that's what, that's what is going to happen. Let me, uh, let me lower my, my bouncer here. I was worried in the previous demo that the pendulum was eventually going to reach that spot. So what I'm going to do is go up in amplitude so I can reach the end. Let me go up in amplitude, say to there, no actually more like, like there. And I want to reduce the frequency. Actually, let me make it a little bit. So I'm going to reduce the frequency. I'm at 3.5. 5.9. 5 5.8. Excuse me. 4.9, 4, 4.8. 4, 4.6. 4, 4.4. 4, 4.2. 4, 4.1. 4, 4, 3, 9, 3, 7, 3.37, 3.37, 3.5, 3.3, 3.1. Remember, when, when did the other guy fell off? In 3.17, right? 3.1, now I have increased my amplitude. 3.1, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 3.0, 
four three still going on four uh, 45 3.45 47 3.50 remember 3.50 was a lower amplitude right so let me actually try it right there that was 3.50 oh no let me try it again you're at a higher amplitude now yeah let me go to 3.55 so that's one state of the system okay And that is another state of the system. Okay, so what is it doing? Once it reaches the wall, this guy turns to the other side, actually very flat. Okay, so now I, as I increase the amplitude, as, as I increase the frequency, it keeps banging the walls. And so there are two states for a given frequency, this one and that one. So I'm increasing the frequency more, 3.57, So I have that state again. And that state. Two states, okay? That and that. Which are explored according to initial conditions. Okay. Happy with that demo? It's not all, there's more. Now this is an inverted pendulum, right? You know what happens with an inverted pendulum. This is an equilibrium point, right? The pendulum being upside down is an equilibrium point, but it's an unstable equilibrium point. It, it can go one way or the other, right? It can just climb off that potential well one way or the other, depending on the fluctuations. But imagine doing, doing the following. When the pendulum is, wants to go this way, you pull it, you pull it down, so it wants to climb back up. When it goes this way, you want to pull it back up. Uh, but because this is an, a, very, a very unstable equilibrium point, the rate at which you have to pull back in has to be very fast, and the excursion amplitude has also to be very fast. You have to essentially, uh, on, 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 that, on that potential, um, um, maximum, you have to create a minimum, okay, uh, by driving uh, the, the point of support. <clears throat> so this is what we've done. We've done only one of those regions uh, We've done, um, we've done this place here, um, let's see, here, right here. That's where, that's where we have calculated that hyperbola is right here. This region is an unstable region. Those correspond to stable regions. This is a, a, a different, a slightly different plot uh, that we have done. This is almost, uh, almost uh, a, a proportional this is actually proportional to the drive amplitude and this is proportional to the drive frequency except that it's uh, inverse, inverse goes as the inverse of the frequency. Um, uh, 
square. Okay. Now notice that there is a region here, there is a region right there uh, that is stable. All these shaded regions are stable. This is particularly interesting, the fact that this, this is a stable region where this number 2f0 over f square is negative. 2f0 over f square be negative corresponds to an f0 that is uh, an f0 square that is negative. That is the inverted pendulum. Okay, the inverted, when the pendulum is upside down, omega naught is negative. When the pendulum is side up, omega, omega naught is, is a positive, omega naught square is a positive thing. So it's a positive down here, but it's negative down there because down here is uh, the potential, is you have a potential that has a minimum. Up here, you have a potential that has a maximum. So omega naught square is positive here, omega naught square is negative there. So that region exists in the inverted pendulum. Let me get there. Le uh, let me now drive it. I have noticed that I have to drive it very hard because this is, this is a very small value, very off, a very little off the, uh, the, the origin. So I have to drive with a high frequency. And I also have to drive with a high drive amplitude because again, I'm dividing by, by that term. So let me, uh, let me explore that. So my inverted pendulum is going to exist around 9 hertz. I was driving, no excuse me, about around 25 hertz. Remember I was driving around 3 point something hertz for the uh, side of pen, uh, pendulum. For the inverted pendulum I need to go to about 25 hertz. Huh? Yeah, you'll see. 25 hertz, okay? And then, but I also need to drive a very high amplitude. Okay, so, that, you see, that is 25 hertz. You see the speaker, the, the, uh, the uh, diaphragm of the speaker. So, let me bring my amplitude. Notice that it's stable, and a test of the stability is to move it about it. If it is stable, it's going to oscillate about that stable point. Okay? I'm going to turn this off because I, I really care for this speaker. Um, the frequency will be the same if we have a, if the pendulum will have more degrees of freedom, like it was like something like this? Um, so, Right, you, you still have, you still have a, 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 a maximum in all directions, yeah. yeah. So, um, I, I likely it would. Um, because if you drive only uh, vertically, oh wait a minute, um, it might actually be preferential, right? Because notice we were driving, no, it would not be preferential. Just driving the point of support uh, um, I, I, any direction is possible. So the frequency might be the same. The amplitude might be different. But this is a, this is a case, you know, this is a case that, that actually pictures in chaos, okay? Because um, the system can go right or left, can quickly depart from its equilibrium point very quickly, the, uh, exponentially depart from its from the condition of zero velocity, zero amplitude, and either to the right or to the left, depending on is sensitive to the initial conditions. There is an unstable point. In chaos, chaos is the is is rooted in unstable points. Unstable points drive chaos out or drive chaos uh, in, uh, into the problem. But if, if I turn the unstable point into a stable point, like this case, right? I, I, I remove chaos from this problem. So it's, uh, chaos, as we will see, is driven by unstable points. 
and we can we can bring the stable the unstable points to become stable points by driving by driving um, uh, around them okay like what we did right here so it's um, uh, you know there, there, is, there are lots of demonstrations that address that issue uh, I remember one where you have uh, they had a, 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 a rod that also was shaken and the rod would all undergo flexural modes uh, but would be standing up upright okay so you can you can uh, stabilize um, on unstable situations with a drive, a parametric drive like this one. Okay. All right. That's that for the, tomorrow. I'll I'll show you just a collection of demonstrations on maintain oscillators, and I'll just motivate the topic. We would not spend any time, actually zero time, doing well, maybe a couple of minutes doing a little math, but. Uh, just to map the problem into certain class of oscillators and uh, uh, the, the, the maintain oscillators are, are present in a lot of aspects of physics and um, we'll, I'll, I'll illustrate those one at a time, okay? So you said the 